Hey, this lesson is all about finding the best one-line lessons to change your mind. My name is Ryan Kurovers. I am from the betfairtrainingcommunity.com to give you another one-line lesson in a hoodie. I'm always in a hoodie. If you are watching this below, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, tell me what you're looking forward to, tell me your favourite one-line lesson so far. What has been your favourite one-line lesson? As I said, I love that these get so much engagement, they get so much activity on them and that we get so many people engaged. Morning Ryan, hope you're well. How are you today, Crypto Carl? Hope you are good, buddy. Uh, back on just the phone today because we had this thing yesterday. So this is the mic that I have, but there's a bit of an issue with the software that we're using when we're trying to connect all of these things up. The software keeps dropping, cutting out, and then it's just crazy. But on to today's, today's lesson. So today's lesson has been submitted by one of you guys. Um, and it's to continue to find some best one-line lessons to change our mind. So that mic is a beast. It is a bit of a beast when the software doesn't mess it up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the support team from the software are working on it for us because it keeps telling the computer keeps telling the, the software keeps telling the computer to use the computer mic and the mic keeps going now I'm here and I want I want to work so that's what's sort of causing a bit of an issue uh, but I'll get to the bottom of it and we'll get these sorted so I think with this lesson it's it's a bit tricky for for me because it doesn't actually give me that much information so to continue to find some best one line trading lessons to change your mind. So I think from the best lessons that I can give you are that you've got to talk to yourself and I think you've got to assess what you're doing and I think you've got to keep telling yourself that you can do this and to break these steps down. And let me know if you if you agree with this as well that I think you've got to have a trading plan. I think mean, that's one of the best lessons that you can have. And I think mean, you've got to be constantly assessing that. And I think you've got to start with the what has to happen question. And then I think from there, you've got to build out a trading plan. And then I think you've got to assess yourself, your own mentality, how you trade. And then I think from there, you've got to then go into assessing the game in play or the event in play. And then from, from there, I think the step is then to review, not just the profitability of that trade, but you, how you performed in that, in that trade. And I think then alongside that, you've got to make sure that you've, got, you've set yourself some rules that you're going to keep telling yourself that you're going to follow. So it's, I'm going to get in at this point. I'm going to get out at that point. I'm going to get in at this point. I'm going to get out at that point. And then telling yourself that. Um, a lesson on why a trading plan is so important. Yeah. You know, I think a trading plan is so important because it gives you a pathway to follow. It gives you something to aim at. So if you are just firing a shotgun, boom, like that, it just goes, you know, the blast is huge. Whereas when you use a sniper rifle, you're very much honing in on a target. And that's what a trading plan gives you. A trading plan gets rid of the noise. It starts to identify the games or events that you're going to trade. And then it also gives you the information to, <coughs> to go and trade them. So on your trading plan... I keep it so simple. You know, people ask for a copy of my trading plan and it says first half goals, my split state, half time L LTD, LTD, lay the draw, half time lay the draw, split stake is the over 1.5s for me. So then on those games, I put the information that I have found or researched, which comes back from the what has to happen question. 
and then the rules are just there as well. So with a trading plan, it clearly shows you the games that you're going to be trading that day. It tells you the times that you're going to be trading. So then you can be there present. And one thing that I would say as well is don't just turn up. So like for these videos, for example, I don't just turn up at 10 o'clock, hit live and go for it. I try to start thinking about the videos from about 20 to 10. You know, start thinking about looking at the lesson, thinking about some thoughts about the lesson so that I'm prepared when we go live to to be able to to talk about what I want to talk about and what I think I need to talk about. And I do the same with trading. If I'm trading at 3 p.m., for example, I won't turn up at 3 p.m. I'll probably turn up at 5 to or 10 to, depending on, on what's happening. And um, hello from Bulgaria. Um, and then I've got that the notes in front of me on Evernote and I'll just rifle through them. I'll just have a, a quick sort of, yeah, okay, you know, if there's more to do before the game, I might turn up 15, 20 minutes before and just start looking through uh, and start looking through the um, the notes, the notes, looking through Twitter just to make sure that something hasn't drastically changed, just to reiterate my thoughts. And then I've got my trading plan. I've got my notes. That gives me the discipline. And then what I've got to do is follow that. And what then I think a lot of people don't do is they don't talk to themselves. They or, And when they do, they kid themselves. Where what you've got to do is you've got your trading plan and you go, these are the rules. I've got to follow these rules. I'm going to follow these rules. And just keep telling yourself that. I'm going to follow these rules. I'm going to follow these rules. I'm going to follow these rules. So I'm going to enter at 2.0. I'm going to enter at 2.0. I'm going to enter at 2.0. So then you enter at 2.0. Yes, Daniel, it does help to have it written down. And then what I want you to do is talk it out as well. Because you cannot lie to yourself when you're talking it through. <coughs> so you've got it wrote, written down on a piece of paper. Then you've also got it in your mind. You're telling yourself, I'm going to get in at 2.0. I'm going to get in at 2.0. I'm going to get in at 2.0. Talk yourself through the trade. People might think you're crazy, but you've got your rules. Has there been six shots on target? No, there hasn't been six on sh shots on target. Why am I entering this trade? Why am I entering this trade? Why am I entering this trade? I'm breaking the rules. I'm breaking the rules. I'm breaking the rules. I know it sounds so crazy, but the more and more you talk to yourself, the more success you will have because eventually your brain will go, what are you doing? You absolute numpty. You should not, should not be doing this. And you won't do it anymore. And then you can look back on your plan. So I think for me, the best way to change our minds is in threefold, really. It's the what has to happen question and then using those answers to build a trading plan around the strategy you want. I won't just leave that finger up. I should have started that way, shouldn't I? So what has to happen question build a trading plan and follow that trading plan and keep talking to yourself. You know, I've read this book here, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. This book is a really cool little book. It's £8 and it's only just over 250 pages. It's got some really good scientific studies done in, in here and it's talking about talking to yourself and the impact that it can have on on your own brain. You know, the guy who wrote it is a PhD, is a best-selling author, and he's an abs he's an authority in self-talk. This was a really, really, really good book. I read this a while back now, and it did reiterate a lot of things that I share with you guys in terms of that you've got to talk to yourself. I always keep to the rules until a couple of losses, then the discipline goes out the window and I up the stakes out of control. So what I want you to do there is this is when that that looking back and trying to connect those dots is so, so, so important because knowing your triggers, what can you do? What can you do to stop those triggers? So when I, I'm, I'm going to ask you the question now, what 
What's on your mind when you've done those losses? What's on your mind? First time watching live, great videos. Thank you, David. Great for you to be joining us live. Uh, while the what's on your mind question is, is tinkering away for you, Metal, if you, and if you want to comment, that's great. We can do, we can delve into that a little bit. Someone asked a question about what do I use on Twitter? Who who do I use on Twitter? Basically, I just search on Twitter. You will find that, like Liverpool, for example, their main account will be uh, publishing uh, publishing the, the the news you see, and I'll just pick that up. It's not wanting to have a losing day. Okay, so what's the main challenge about having a losing day? So yeah, I, I'll use Twitter, I'll go into the, the teams. If I'm trading Man United, Arsenal, I'll just put Man United v Arsenal in and loads of bits will come up. Chasing losses, worst thing you can ever do. Yeah, but people do it. I'm going to try and... It, we've to try and get to the to the bottom of this so what is what is the challenge about that the challenge is not seeing the bigger picture okay so so what do you want to get with the bigger picture so i think that is the runway so i know there'll be uh People typing and bits and bobs. That is the runway for me. What has to happen? Question. Planning out your day, your trading plan, and then following that, talking to yourself. Winning over the year. Before you had BTC, what places you go for your stats other than Twitter? I don't ever get my stats from Twitter. I used to use soccer stats. Um... I used to use soccer stats for my free stats uh, and then it was a nightmare crunching all of those numbers. Took me so much time, so then we built BTC. But I've always used Twitter for, for knowledge of players coming back or team teams being uh, published because, you know, Twitter's really quick and if there is, say, a player pulling out at the last minute... Um, then boom oh god straight away uh, so i do want to dive into some of these comments as well because we've got some amazing comments coming in so i'm just gonna i'm gonna put those up and just go into them because i know metal guru so challenge is not seeing the bigger picture and the bigger picture is winning over the year okay so do you think what do you think would happen if you asked yourself the question before you then did that next next losing trade, if you said, what, if I do this trade, what am I sacrificing? If I say yes to this, to this trade, what am I sacrificing? That's the question that I want you to ask yourself before you do any trade. So if I say yes to this trade, what am I sacrificing? And if you if you cannot connect that to your trading plan, if you cannot connect that to the rules, just think about that. If I say yes to this trade, what am I sacrificing? Guarantee it's the bigger picture. If I say yes to this trade, I'm sacrificing the next two, three days of being able to trade Probably better selections. Yes, I've had a bad day. But if I say yes to this bad trade now that I haven't researched, I'm sacrificing all semblance of discipline and winning long term. Okay, Metal Guru, so what are you going to do to combat that? You don't have to answer because that is a personal question and it's different to every single person. So I'm going to answer that question differently to you, Steve Howe, the rest of these guys on here, Adam Martin, etc., etc. Everybody is going to have a different, different, different way of handling that. But can you just see by, by us breaking that down a little bit, we've, we've got to the real root of the problem. And we can now start to formulate 
a way of breaking that down. A lot of this is questions. Me asking you guys questions, you thinking about the answers that work for you, which is why I'm so, so passionate about doing the videos this way and me sort of emphasising you. You're, you. All of you guys watching this right now, you're the hero of your story. I'm just here to guide you along. It's got, and you know, people want trading strategies and they want to be spoon fed and I'm not going to spoon feed you. Yes, I'm going to ask you tough questions just like we have with Metal right now. But you know what? Metal stepped up to the plate. He smashed that ball out of the park. Look at his answers. Straight away in there. Doo -doo -doo. Answers to really, 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 really tough questions on YouTube as well. now is starting to develop a better understanding of their own trading by just thinking about what was on their mind. And if I'm saying yes to that, what am I saying no to? I found working with a small bank, waiting for a time to make a decent return and then wanting to work it out. I know what I have to do. I just have to keep getting my head to do it. So ask yourself that question. If I'm saying yes to this, what am I saying no to? And ask it out loud. And then if you do, do go against yourself, ask yourself, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Why aren't I following the rules? 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 And Phil, picking up on your point about the smaller bank, do not beat yourself up about the smaller bank. Think about how far you've come. And remember the bigger picture if you are. So, in fact, actually, let me spin it round. So, what's on your mind when it comes to the smaller bank? Because there could be a whole host of things and I don't want to just delve in and start talking about what I think it is because I think it's different for every individual person. So <clears throat> when it comes to a smaller bank, what's on your mind? This has been a cracking, this has been a cracking episode, I think, guys. You know, we've gone, we've gone deep on some really, really, really good topics here, some really good bits. I don't have enough money to make a difference. Why? Why Why don't you think you have enough money to make a difference? It's been a cracking episode, this guy. It's cracking. So many people should listen to this episode. I don't know if you agree, but I think, I, to be honest, I think the whole trading community needs to listen to this episode. And you know what? It hasn't it, the the uh, the gold in it has come from you guys. That's why I'm so excited and passionate about this episode. I think this is a cracker. Every single person should listen to this episode. Every single person who wants to trade should listen to this episode because of the stuff you're coming out here. Working with two to five pound stakes is hard. Okay. It, but why? Is it because you want to make lots and lots of money? Because if, if that's the case, you're never going to make the big money if you can't handle the smaller bank, as we've discussed. Exactly, Lee. If you start with a small bank and you make just 10% return on investment, it is the same. Ryan, do you have a thread available about trading with a small bank? Keith does. Keith has one available in BTC where he talks about, he calls it a 3% club and that's what he's aiming for. And he's shown how you can grow a very, very small bank very quickly by not focusing on sort of making big, big, big money. He's focusing on percentages and he shares his trades. He keeps it very simple, Keith. Keith's all about sort of first half goals and half time lay the draws and has made very good money from, from doing that. Um, 
And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult when you've got a small bank because you see these small amounts of profit adding up. Like you see these small amounts of profit. But if you want the big profit, if you want to be able to trade full time, if you want to be making the big, big, big money, um, yeah, it's it's working with a small bank and having the time to increase it. Yes, but isn't that better than blowing a bank? Like Einstein said that, rumoured to have said that the greatest, the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Like it's the eighth wonder of the world. Compound interest is one of the greatest things the world has ever, ever seen. And all compound interest is, is that you've grown your bank by say 7% or 10% one month. Then the next month, you're using slightly higher stakes, slightly more, but you're using basically free money that you haven't had to put in. So if you've got, if you're using £10 as a bank and then you've now got £11, then the next month you've got £12, 10 or whatever. Over the time, it will add up. So what I want you to do, Phil, is I want you to think about that and I want you to, to write it out. I want you to write out, just add sort of 7% growth to a bank every single month, just so you can see it, because I want you to think about the bigger picture. Think about starting with whatever your bank is, and then look at adding 7% to that bank a month, and then start to see that grow over the period. And what I also want you to do, so there's two things I'm setting you up to do right now. Two things, Phil. Number one, I want you to get a spreadsheet and I want you to put your starting bank in. Don't care what it is. Really don't care. In fact, the smaller the bank, the better, because you need to be able to handle the smaller bank to be able to ever handle a bigger bank. Okay? I don't want you to get to start beating yourself up about having to have this, this big, 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 big bank. Say you trade with five pounds and return five pound brilliant, but if you trade with 50 and return 50, I think that's time well spent. I think you're putting too much pressure on yourself, Phil. Like I really do. I think you're putting so much pressure on yourself. I, I, do, I think what you're doing is you're not investing in the long term. I think what you're doing here is saying, it's, it's not worth my time right now, but it is because what you're doing is you're laying the foundations to be a cracking trader. And you will never, ever, ever, ever be able to make £50 on a £50 stake without a ridiculous amount of risk. And it can be done, but the risk return, talking about that window, is just going to be so, so difficult. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on these small incremental gains because the gains, the, nothing changes. The market does not change. The only thing that will change is you, unless you're dropping in 10 grand, right? If you're doing a £50 trade or a £5 trade, the market will move pretty much the same. The only thing that changes is you. And I guarantee you right now, it will be so detrimental to your mindset if you started if you started to, to use that. So I'm trying to lay the foundations, but I can't afford to lose. Why, then why can't you afford to lose? If you're using low, 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 low stakes, like 2 to 3% of your bank, you can afford to lose. It really does sound like you're putting too much pressure on yourself to build a bank quickly. If, you've, if you're saying that, I can't afford to lose, and thank you so much. I mean, I think we need to give an absolute round of applause to Phil here because Phil is a legend sharing this with us guys so that we can all, we can give so much information and we can get better as traders. Two things that I want you to do, Phil, is I want you, I want you to get this spreadsheet, I want, to, I want you to put your bank amount in it, and I want you to just add 7%, just go month one, bank, and then in another column, just add 7% to it as a running total, and I just want you to do that for 12, 14, 15, 20, 36 months, whatever, okay? And I want you to stop beating yourself up about, I cannot afford to lose. If you're using 2% of your bank, yes, you can afford to lose. I want you to look back and give yourself credit for this. And the second thing I want you to do, Phil, 
is I want you to send an email to info at betfairtradingcommunity.com. I want you to put FAO Martin and speak to Martin about bank management and bank building because Martin is a bloody god at this and he's got some amazing articles which he will send to you that will help. And so, so we've had proof that it can be done as well. Uh, I can't remember the name because I just read the comment before it disappeared. But someone's just commented that it started with 100 quid. Now they've got 650 pounds. I mean, it can. It's so, so, so can be done to build that bank slowly. Work on the process, work on the trading plan, work on the strategy. What has to happen? Take the focus on having to win all the time. Put the focus on the process of it. And that's it, guys. So I'm just going to summarise that episode. I think this has been one of the greatest trading videos because of the amount of depth that you guys have given. And I absolutely take my hat off to you for sharing so much with me, especially in a public forum. It's, it's amazing and it's going to help us all get better at trading. So let's summarise this up. You've got to start with the what has to happen question. Can you leave a link, please? Where is the what has to happen question, the what happens to happen video? So uh, what I will do is, the what has to happen video is on this YouTube channel and it's called What I Look For In Trades. I'm probably gonna tra change the title of that to the what has to happen question because I think it's, it's just needed. I think what I'll also probably do is look to create a maybe a series of this uh, and go for it like that. Phil, I'll leave a link. What link? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head where these um, these blog posts are, which is why I think it's best to email Martin. So if you email info at betfairtradingcommunity.com, FAO Martin, and put uh, just put in the subject in the body of the email, Hey, Martin, uh, Ryan said to email you to get some information on on bank um, on bank building. Yeah, I'll put the e email in the in the comments below, but it's info at betfairtradingcommunity.com. So let's think about this. The what has to happen question. What has to happen question. Think about that. Think about your trading plan. And then think about talking to yourself and following that plan. And that really is it, guys. Let's keep it super simple. Uh, if anyone wants to get in touch, you can head on over to betfairtradingcommunity.com and uh, there's loads of information on there. I'll try and pull some of these things together to try and make them a little bit more streamlined for you and um, maybe a pop-up where I can just give you that video straight away. So have a great day, guys. Stay safe and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be talking about research, research, research and controlling your emotions. So a little bit similar to today, but we're going to get deep into that one. And yeah, please do share this with all of your trading friends. I think that this video could help so many traders go through so many questions uh, and make them all a better trader. So I will see you tomorrow, guys. Same place, same time. Have a great day.